It's a beautiful morning. I thought I'd get in and remove these heads from this penstemon. And that allegedly will drive young shoots up and more flowers a bit later on. Not quite as strong a flush as the original ones, but more flowers nonetheless, which is good. So we'll leave those few that are doing okay because they're still attractive. Quite a lot to do today, mainly harvesting and a bit of planting. Well, we're gonna take these broad beans out today and we've got a pretty hefty crop in here, which is fantastic. And then I'm just gonna get these plants out of here. I'll recover the surface a bit and then gonna get more purple sprouting broccoli in. And that'll be good use of this space over the winter months. And we'll just take a few of these and see what they're like. As you can see, they're pretty mature pods. And I'm hoping that we'll have some fairly substantial beans in here. Let's have a look. Yeah, fantastic. Just look at that. So the bulk of these runner beans will go into the freezer. We'll eat a few fresh, but it's great to have broad beans during the winter months out of the freezer and they freeze so well. To be honest, we don't even blanch them. They just go straight in to freezer bags once we've taken them out of the pods and just get them into portion sizes and that's good to go. And then in the winter months, when it's cold and wet, we have some fresh raw beans in our dinner. <laughs> It's not a very big space. I've got to say, that crop is crazy good. That's got to be my best ever crop of broad beans out of that sort of space. Absolutely fantastic. And that'll put a good few bags in the freezer. And there was just a couple with this sort of rust on, but I'd say half a dozen. I think the beans will still be good inside. I'll tell you what, let's just open one. just fine, no problem at all. So we've probably caught those just at the perfect time. They're all looking really healthy and they'll shell very easily. And this will go into my compost bin because it'll decompose. I'll probably leave out these that have got the brown leaves just in case that's a virus. It looks like some sort of rust to me. And then in the plot, well, I'll show you. So that's the extent of the weeds. Very little in reality, and it'll take me just two minutes to take those out. Naturally, we've got some mare's tail in there, which we'll pull as a dock leaf. And there's a little sycamore tree started there. We'll have him out, there's plenty of those around. And then I can just get this bed ready and get some broccoli in there. And that will be very productive indeed for a few, well, minutes work really, probably 20 minutes. And at the end of the path there, you can see one of my new gardeners on the payroll, which is a baby robin. And he's very friendly indeed. I've also got two blackbirds on the payroll. So I'm sure they'll be along to help me anytime soon. And this little fellow is just gonna come along and make good use of the soil that I've turned over and find all the grubs. That's one of the reasons why I do organic gardening because these little girls and boys are in no danger whatsoever.
so just a few minutes clearing up and ready to put some more purple sprouting broccoli in and I'm going to use these stakes again these are like a very high density plastic they're absolutely fabulous there's no rust and they stay up good and proper they're very sturdy and I'm going to put I think probably four plants maybe five in here and I just space them like that uh, one two three four probably put one on the end I'm going to leave the rest of this structure up I'm going to leave the hoop, hoops up and I'm going to leave this cord up because it's very weather resistant and as these plants get bigger they do get challenged in the winter in terms of swaying to and fro and it'll give me something quick and easy just to brace them if I need to bring these forward and from the other side so I'm going to get some holes into the ground I'm going to use the trusty garden line because on this plot I am working against club root and this does seem to succeed and my broccoli seedlings which I sowed in the beginning of July are ready to go in and I've done a few over the far side of the plot and a few more here I think And this soil is incredibly easy to dig into because it's always just been homemade compost and I've piled it up year on year and it really is becoming very good quality and of course this is no dig so the goodness in the soil is getting better all the time I think right that's number three and it's really deep here so even easier to dig number four and as with all brassicas you can get down quite high on the stem because it doesn't hurt the plant at all right get some lime in there and get them planted I'm just going to get these stakes in nice and deep as hard as I can get them and then they're set for the winter and then give these a bit of a water and the next job on my list is to water my pumpkins and I'm going to feed them at the same time and I'll show you how useful those watering tubes became So this is my homemade feed. It's a mixture of worm wee and nettle tea, a bit of comfrey. It's been around quite a while, so it's quite mature. And it's that time of year when the fruit are starting on these plants that you need to feed them to get the best out of them. And I'm basically using probably three quarters of a can of water and just topping it up with this. I don't need to do this too many times during the season, but one good feed every now and then makes quite a big difference in my experience. And there's enough there to do that another couple of times. So as you can see, it's not easy to get to these plants to the base. So that's why these tubes exist. And you can see it more clearly there on this smaller plant but in amongst here there's one just there and without damaging the plant I can water it relatively easy I have noticed when I've been in here that those few fruits that I saw growing that are yellow are actually going to drop off and that's a result of them not having been pollinated so we've got a few like that but we've got plenty of good healthy looking fruit in here too and they need plenty of this feed so i'll work my way around and give everything a good dose of my homemade special feed
So everything isn't rosy in the polytunnel. This morning I came into this fella, this beautiful tomato on the deck. And on closer examination, you've got some infection in the base of the tomato. And this is of the plant that people suggested that I had possible blossom end rot. And my great subscribers suggested that I add a bit of calcium to the watering. So that's exactly what I've done. I've brought some calcium carbonate and it's about a teaspoon of this into the watering can and I'm going to put it in all the plants. Just make sure that I eliminate that possibility and we'll see how the others fare. Looking at them, I can't see any more evidence of them getting that problem, but I think it's when they get a bit riper, so it may yet cause a problem. So just about a teaspoon is the advice. So we're not gonna put huge amounts in and I'm gonna just stir that up and we'll add it to their watering, fingers crossed. Well, unbelievably, I harvested from these courgettes last night and well, I either miss them or they just grow giant overnight. I can't believe how many additional courgettes I found looking in here this morning. And you need to make sure that you get underneath, otherwise you miss them. I think I can leave that one for a while longer. This one is definitely grown overnight. Just get the base off. There we go. Amazing. I'm going to get into here as well because there's another giant and these are so much better when they're this sort of size. You let them get much bigger than that and well they're not ideal eating to be honest. Another fantastic one that's four. Anything else? Yeah I think we've got to take this or do I leave him? I think Mrs K will say stop cropping so many courgettes because I don't know what to do with them. There we are. They make great spaghetti, courgette spaghetti. That's really done for today. I just wanted to show you the difference between netted brassicas and non-netted brassicas. Take a look at this. So I've got some sticks to clear up here, but it's just like looking at lace. It's absolutely mauled. And these are cauliflowers and sprouts. And by comparison, if you look at wow, the broccoli in this mesh, or these cabbage in this bird netting. So it certainly pays to put some sort of netting over your brassicas. I mean, most of these leaves are edible. Whereas if I was eating the leaves in those other plants, that would just be a lost crop. Well, that's me done. And hopefully there'll be plenty of good produce to be had over the next coming months. I certainly can't beat that harvest. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button. And if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochen Bar.